Oh, it's video. This month, I finally graduated from my undergraduate degree in molecular biology and genetics at the University of East Anglia. I had my ceremony two years later after I completed my degree in 2020. Thank you, COVID. So this has inspired me to make some videos all about why I believe that you don't need to go and get a master's to work in the field of computational biology, genomic data science, fun times. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Genomics with Georgia. I am a genomic data scientist. I live and I work in Cambridge in the UK. I create content all about how to get into genomic data science, slash bioinformatics, computational biology, the whole kind of data bio shebang coming from a wet lab degree. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Genomics with Georgia and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about why you, yes, you do not need, and I say need, you can have one, it's nice, but you do not need a master's degree to get in to genomic data science, oh, can't even say my job title, <laughs> to get into genomic data science or bioinformatics. So if you want to get some reassurance or if you just want some more information about what it is like to be working in science with just an undergraduate degree and yes we do exist thank you very much you clicked on here because you're probably thinking how do i get into science without a grad degree surely that doesn't work well i'm here to tell you yes yes it does the only reason why i was able to do that was because i did other things as well as the degree so we're going to talk about today if you're at that stage in your undergrad, the things you can do during your undergrad that can kind of make up for the masters. We're gonna talk about how to actually get these jobs without the master's degree, because I swear to school, swear to school, <laughs> I swear to God, in school, the only things that you see as a science career are like, hey, I went undergrad, then I do a master's, then I get a PhD, and then I'm a scientist. Well, no, you are a scientist, as soon as you are studying and applying science. So do not stress, you are a scientist, no matter your level of degree education. So we're gonna talk about that. And then we are going to talk about, okay, we are gonna talk at the end about why master's degrees are a good idea, because they can be. And I'll explain why at the end. So three things we're gonna cover, stay tuned, let's get into it. One of my favorite things to do during your undergrad, if you were lucky to clock early on that you wanted to learn this stuff, things to do early on in your undergrad to make up for not having a master's. So first and foremost, in your undergrad, if you are lucky enough, and I say lucky enough because I wasn't, if you were lucky enough to have free summers during your years, semesters, terms, during your years of your degree, utilize them wisely, so wisely. If you are able to, well, first of all, if you need to work like I did, work and work hard and work well and try and work in positions that give you other soft skills that are better for your future scientific self that does exist and you will get there soon. So work really hard, take on extra responsibilities and make the most of that time because even if you don't have the option to like volunteer and do free things because you have to pay bills like most people do, just make sure that whatever you are spending your time doing, still view that as an experience that contributes to the person you put yourself forward as when you graduate. Um, I spoke about my bar managing career so much in all of my science interviews and that made me stand out even though I didn't have a master's I still was an interesting candidate so it doesn't matter if it's not science but full on invest in your things that you kind of have to do that look like they hold you back um, and secondly I mean we've said this before and I'm going to say it again the moment you realize you want to learn to code that's when you start learning to code so coding takes time to like it's like a little ball like rolling 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 and suddenly you're like boom 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 down the hill like i can do it now but you've got to start and it takes a it's a bit slow starting right so you've just got to start as soon as you can um videos with courses that i did um i'll do some more uh, videos about tons of other courses you can go and do but essentially 
If you want to learn to code, start learning to code now. Go take some online courses. So I think one of the main things when you are trying to bulk out your experiences as an undergrad is remember that when you go to sell yourself as an applicant, you're selling your potential. So you're not, uh, you don't have, you know, a ton of experience to be like, hey, look, I improved X, Y, Z by Z amount. And, you know, I did all these amazing things and that's why you should hire me. You're selling your potential, right? So make sure that your experiences that you're building up prove to people that you're a quick learner, that you're resourceful, that you think on your feet that you have the ability to come into an institute and adapt and learn and take things on board. Remember, you're selling your potential. You don't have to be the, the finished product and you're not, like you're, you're just a grad. It's so you don't need to worry about having everything down. You just need to show that you're willing to learn. You started to make an independent effort on your own to learn and that you have the potential for this company or institute to, to get you, to train you, to mould you and to make you great for them and for yourself. So that's how you can kind of substitute your undergraduate experiences, even if you don't have a master's degree. So point number two and point number one was a little bit rambly. So we'll try and uh, make this a little bit quicker this time. So point number two is how do you actually get the job? So now you've you think you're ready to apply, but how do you get them? Because you're right, nine times out of 10, you go on LinkedIn jobs or you go on Indeed and all of the job descriptions for the jobs that you're looking at say, PhD or equivalent experience, masters or equivalent experience. None of them say undergrad is fine. Um, but the important thing to remember here is, and I can't stress this enough, and especially to my ladies out there listening and watching, there's a really scary statistic. When women and men see a job advert, a lot of women will not apply for that position unless they fill the majority of those criteria. Um, and a lot of the time, all of them. <laughs> Whereas men don't have that lack of confidence and they will still apply for jobs, even if they don't fit the criteria. Um, so I think, how do you go about getting these jobs that require a master's? Well, here's the thing, you apply, <laughs> you just apply for them because there are so many people out there and I can't stress this enough, who don't satisfy all of the job requirements. They apply for the job. The hiring managers like that application, they interview them and they get the job. So you don't have to have all of the requirements on a job spec to well, to get it or to apply for it. So you've got to apply for these things. Otherwise, you're not going to know if you're just not going to know if you were suitable or not. And what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You don't get the job. So genuinely, if jobs say we're looking for a master's degree and then you come in with like, hey, I've got an undergrad, but you know, time to change it. And I've done this course, I've done this course. I did like this project on my own. I like this, this, this and this. These are my interests. I'm a really quick learner. Here are the skills. Like the reason why your company aligns to my values is this, this and this. Why wouldn't they want to give you a chance? So times are changing and sometimes job specs can be a little bit out of date but I've already seen a difference. So years and years ago, it was PhD or something. Now they're going masters or something. So undergrads, we're having our time. You know, the time is now. You can learn these skills elsewhere that can get you these technical roles. You don't need a graduate degree. And how do you get the job? I'll say it again, you just apply for it, okay? Don't be intimidated by job criteria. You don't need it. You can do it without it because I did it without it. My job spec said graduate degree, but here I am, I got in the door without the graduate degree. And I promise you, you guys can all do the same. It's so possible. So just apply, just apply. <laughs> so guys, last but not least, I just want to say sometimes masters are a good idea. And I just want to like caveat this video just to stress the fact that if you finished your undergrad and you have no idea that this was a field you wanted to go into, you have the money to go and do a master's, lucky you, then definitely if that's a way that you can get the skills for the job that you want, go and do that. But I think it's really important to remember that. So in the UK, if you're a, what are we called when we're a UK student? 
home student yeah if you're a home student doing a master's in the uk the government will give you a student loan that will cover usually most of your tuition fees but it won't cover your living costs so doing a master's in the uk is kind of only an option if you have money that can support your living costs <laughs> or you work full time to finance your life and do the masters and not like that's just I loved working full time during my undergrad, but I can't I can't stress enough how detached I was from the science because my whole time was spent running a bar. So working full time while doing an education is hard and like let alone let alone working full time and doing a master's. So massive, massive respect to the people that work full time and do a master's. I applaud you. But I just really wanted to put out there today that there are other ways to get those skills that don't ruin your mental health in ways that doing that lifestyle can. Um, but however, if you have, if you want to do that, great. And if you have the money and the options to do a master's and you're able to do it comfortably, that is a good idea, right? Like you still found something that's gonna give you the skill sets. Sets? <laughs> gonna give you so many skill sets um, to land the jobs in bioinformatics and data science because I appreciate, right? Like not everybody thinks about this during their undergrad and that's fine. So master's degrees are a good idea. If you finish your degree, you finish your undergrad, you don't have any exposure yet to the field it is a good way of getting in there and i do have friends that have gone to do masters in genomics and in bioinformatics so i will do a video about my kind of recommendations of the best ones in the uk that you should apply to if that's an option for you but just want to stress you don't need it it's helpful to have it for some people but there are other routes into this field so that is it for today ladies and gentlemen and peoples of the world my name is Georgia. This has been Genomics with Georgia. If you've liked today's content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you soon for another installment of Genomics with Georgia.